Welcome everyone. My name is Carlos Boyd and I'm a senior technical marketing architect with VMware. Today, I will be chatting with Ivan Novick about the Green Plum 7 beta release. Ivan, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, I'm Ivan Novick. I'm product management lead for Green Plum at VMware. I've been on the Green Plum project since 2009 um, in all kinds of roles and uh, yeah, been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, sounds sounds like you have. And and I know we're here specifically to talk about Green Plum 7, but uh, for even myself and, and anyone else that's watching, you know, I know a little bit about Green Plum. Uh, but if we could just give like a little bit of, of detail on what exactly is Green Plum? Because uh, I've heard Green Plum database and I've heard Green Plum data warehouse is a data warehouse. So if you could provide some context there. Sure, sure. So, yeah, it is. Greenplum database, right? And um, you know, when when Greenplum was created, um, the the founders were looking for for a, an unmet need. Mm -hmm. uh, they were looking for an opportunity to help, right? And um, they had a a clustering technology that could cluster together database nodes into a bigger superpower system. Mm -hmm. They went around talking to customers about. Um, clustering together OLTP or transactional databases. And all the customers told them, you know, we don't really have a big problem with transactional databases, but we do have this big problem when it comes to analytical databases. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're trying to scale our analytical databases. And we, we, you know, between the lack of performance, lack of features and the pricing, we, we have a big problem. Mm -hmm. So Greenplum DB database was created to to be a, a database that could scale to large data sets. So okay. um, what is the purpose of a database? It's to store all of your data and to query it, right? So if you're, you know, let's say you're a um, an airline and you want to store all the information about your flights and your passengers and the pricing and the discounts, it could be gobs and gobs and gobs of data. And ultimately you want to put it in a big database and, and query it. Mm -hmm. And so, that's the subsection of the database market, which is big data. Mm -hmm. And the big problem is, is that traditional databases operate essentially within the confines of one computer. So you have a computer, you got a database, mm -hmm. and it runs perfectly. Right. But what happens when the data requires 50 computers to store the data and to process the data? Mm -hmm. The original technologies don't work. You need a parallel technology. So Green Plum's a parallel database technology that can combine the power of many computers together to provide one database. Absolutely. All right. And you said one thing that was key. I wrote it down. Yep. Uh, you, and you said big data uh, and, and can scale to large data sets. So would you say Greenplum is only for big data or what would you say to that? That Yeah, person? I mean, it really is. Right? Like if you if all of your data fits on one computer, Mm -hmm. You could totally use Postgres or SQL Server or Oracle. Mm -hmm. The fundamental problem we're solving is when the data doesn't fit on one computer, right? When you need 50 computers or 10 computers or even four computers. And the thing is, is that it's not uncommon and the this the everybody's data continues to grow. So even if you're a middle-sized entity, right, and you are operating with data with a certain amount of data, but now all of a sudden it's become 5X, 8X, 10X bigger. Mm -hmm. More and more people graduate every year into the requirement for um, analyzing data that doesn't fit on one computer. It's a, it's a continually growing market. Exactly. All right. And that's kind of what I was thinking as well. Like I might not be ready for it today, but we're not getting rid of data. We're continuing to add it's to it. Come, everybody's going to have more and more data every year. So right. So ultimately, you can't be limited by one computer. So, if I'm a Green Plum user or a Green Plum enthusiast, uh, what 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 are the top features that I would be excited to hear about in this first beta release of Green Plum Seven? I'm going to go through the top ten features in the Green Plum Seven beta release. So let's get started. All right, number 10, attached partition. 
So attached partition is a new way to work with partitions that allows you to add in new partitions without interfering in the locking scheme. So um, it's it's not taking a full table lock and you can create these partitions for new dates. So if you have a large date range fact table, you could be attaching partitions in and continuing to use the table as you do the attachments. So this is gonna help this new syntax and this new refactoring of how we do partitions is gonna help with locking and system maintenance when it comes to large partition management capability on Green Plum 7. All right, number nine, auto vacuum. So Green Plum 7 has an auto vacuum, both for the catalog and for user data. And it allows you to um, set it up so that to take it away from the, the user management or the DBA management and keep, for example, the catalog tables vacuumed automatically and keep them from getting bloated. So auto vacuum, number nine. Number eight is alter table in place and modify the storage or the encoding. So it allows you to, instead of doing create table as select and copying tables around, you can use the alter table syntax to, for example, change from a non-compressed to a compressed storage or to change the encoding of the table. So alter table um, and modify the parameters of the storage is feature number eight. Number seven, transactions in functions. So um, inside user defined functions, you can do commit and rollback and that's a new capability that allows you, again, for system management and ETL. A lot of times this will be useful to do transactions within functions. Number six, just-in-time code compilation. So just-in-time code compilation um, uses compiler technology to make queries go faster. So essentially, there's a full compiler embedded on the master or the coordinator host. And as the queries come in, you can enable it to take a few milliseconds extra, recompile the machine code to be more efficient in terms of the, the, the CP, in terms of the, the processor, and in terms of making machine code ideally optimized for the CPU. And just in time, recompile and execute the query. With these optimizations, you can see uh, long queries get cut in half from time, or depending on the query, you can see massive improvements in the performance and efficiency of the query execution. All right, number five, upsert. So if you have a, uh, a key-based table and you want to um, either insert if this is a new key in your key-based table, or if you want to update, if the key is already there, update the values, this upsert or insert on or conflict, uh, conflict resolution allows you to, in a single statement, insert the new row or update the row, depending on if that key is present already. So upsert is a new capability that's provided with Greenfilm 7. Row level security, again, coming in from one of the new Postgres features, allows you to set policies at the row level to prevent access to data from people who should not have permission. So not only now can you do it at the table level or the column level, but at the row level, you can implement row level security on Greenfilm 7. Number three, primary keys on compressed tables. So as a fully functioning database, um, primary keys are one of the interesting features that enforce uniqueness and um, also provide an index for searching based on the primary key. Um, up until Green Plum 7, they were available on heap tables, but not on compressed tables. So now that capability is there for compressed tables that you can create primary keys on compressed tables. Number two, Brin indexes and hash indexes. So there's two new, two new indexes are supported in Greenplum version seven. Brin index is for data warehousing. Um, it's a similar to what you would think of as called a zone map. It stores the min and the max values per data block and allows for uh, IO bypass or automatic micro partitioning to, to bypass data that is not relevant to your query condition. Hash indexes are small little indexes. Both of these are small in size. So they're much more space efficient than a B-tree index, which is already supported. But a hash index also is small in size, but is for 
equivalency uh, matching, where you're going to be doing a where clause, looking for an exact match, but want to have a small little efficient index to do that. And then number one, upgrade. We have been working on the upgrade framework for the last few years. We do have an upgrade framework now. It's available on Greenplum 6, and we do plan to also support Greenplum 7 down the road here um, in the near future. So you'll be able to do either in-place upgrade, backup and restore upgrade, create a cutover system onto new hardware. All the options will be there, including an in-place upgrade. So with that, I'd say these are the top 10 new features, but really because Greenplum 7 introduces five major Postgres versions into it that are different from Greenplum 6. So Postgres 9.5, 9.6, Postgres 10, Postgres 11, and Postgres 12 are all incorporating Greenplum 7. So there's a huge array of features. But with this, I hope you can see top 10 exciting new features for Greenplum 7. Thanks a lot. So we just announced or, or just released the beta, I guess that's beta one. Um, right. Probably targeted to specific customers, users, what have you. Um, I'm a I'm a Green Plum user, Green Plum 6, and I'm excited about it. Um, how can I get involved in the beta program? Okay, uh, well, first of all, it is the release notes and the software are both downloadable. Okay. So the it's not um, private access. Okay. So you can you can see the the notes that have all the details. The documentation is there. We're continuing to update the documentation with more fleshing it out with more details, but it's online. Um, you can if you're a VMware customer, you can download the VMware build from from the normal location of, mm -hmm. of beta. You can also if you're an open source Greenplum user, download the um, the build from the GitHub site. Okay. Or if you're really an open source hacker, you can take the ta GitHub tag and you can recompile mm -hmm. um, and build your own Greenplum 7. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as the beta program, um, we personally in the VMware team are going to recruit, um, reach out on LinkedIn, I guess, to me, um, or if you have my email or through LinkedIn and just express interest. And what we'll do is we're going to have a more um, engaged beta program okay. where people want to do testing. We can we're going to work with a set of users to uh, identify areas of interest and go through kind of a more methodical beta testing and feedback. So that's available too. So if you're interested, reach out to me through whatever channel you have. Well, Ivan, thank you so much for sharing that information with us about uh, the Green Plum Seven beta release, uh, the top features uh, for everyone viewing. Um, stay tuned. Uh, more to come as the, the next beta releases uh, are announced, and we will definitely include uh, some release notes and other links along with the uh, the video recording uh, for you to understand how to consume the beta, uh, get involved with the beta, uh, so on and so forth.